right here on Highway 155 and headed down to Texas A&M's Rellis campus towards the Center for Infrastructure Renewal. Once I get down there, we're going to talk with Dr. Lacey and his team of engineers, and we're going to show you what types of impacts can be felt from tornadic debris. Tornadoes are some of the most breathtaking yet destructive phenomena that occur on planet Earth. On average, it's estimated that each tornado causes $2.5 million in damage, which can be more depending on location and strength. Dr. Lacey and his team of engineers at the Hypervelocity Impact Laboratory typically conduct high-speed experiments. For our purposes, they were able to slow down their equipment to mimic velocities found within a tornado. In our laboratory, we've established the capability to launch projectiles at hypervelocities. Typically, that means speeds in the range of two kilometers a second to eight kilometers a second, or on the high end, 18,000 miles per hour. Uh, as part of this story, we've modified our experimental setup to allow us to, to shoot uh, airborne projectiles at velocities consistent with peak wind speeds in tornadoes, typically two to 300 miles per hour. When we launched projectiles at different materials, one common theme emerged. The more layers of protection that you have, the more likely you are to be unharmed by debris. You want to put as many walls between you and the exterior as possible because our experiments show that uh, representative wall structures in, in conventional homes offer very little penetration resistance when it comes to projectiles traveling at two to 300 miles per hour. If you have a given wall and it slows the projectile down from 300 miles per hour to 100 miles per hour, and then you have another wall that slows the, the residual, the initial residual velocity of the projectile from 100 miles per hour to 50 miles per hour, the goal is to, to, to gradually slow the projectile or penetrator down as much as possible before it reaches uh, the human or the asset you're looking at. These experiments even have a personal connection to the team. Sarah Beth Reagan, a sophomore engineering major at Texas A&M, had her home damaged by a tornado a couple of years ago. Yeah, so I was woken up by the storm because there was like really big thunder and it woke me up and then um, my parents came and were like, hey, there's a tornado warning. Um, and so we went and got in a room in the center of our house that doesn't have windows. Although a portion of her home was damaged, thankfully, she and her family stayed safe from debris. We have a bunch of trees in our yard, kind of like a little forest, and um, the tornado, as it was going through, it knocked down all of the trees it came across and kind of put them in a spiral pattern, too. So when we went after, we were still cleaning up the trees from oh, wow. when it happened. A tree ended up falling on our house and kind of damaging a little bit of our roof and one of our gutters. Whether you're looking for cost-effective materials that better withstand debris, or you're in a worst-case scenario dealing with tornado damage, research at Texas A&M is being done to improve our livelihoods when dealing with the impacts of tornadic debris. At A&M, we have our Center for Infrastructure Renewal. The infrastructure is building construction, so we look at different types of construction materials, you know, you know whether it's wood or, or high-performance concrete and, and other common building materials, and, and they can be easily uh, tuned to withstand uh, wind loads and, uh, and, and conceivably uh, provide some penetration resistance to airborne objects. And then also, Texas A&M has a facility called Disaster City that whose sole mission is to you know, look at the effects of, of natural disasters, hurricanes, tornadoes, uh, earthquakes, and, and establish uh, uh, best practices uh, for surviving them. Now hopefully you and your loved ones won't have to put these practices into place, but if you do, now you're prepared for when sunny turn severe. Up next, meteorologist Colleen Campbell's here to join us and she's going to tell us about a distinct noise you hear outside when a tornado warning is issued.